What is up, y'all? Brad Payne, the game is here. Welcome to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. This is the fifth game of the main series, as you guys know. Again, I apologize that I couldn't uh, record the whole Apollo Justice um, the gameplay, but oh well. It's unfortunate, but let's go ahead and try this. I'm on my new phone. I can't wait to try this out. Uh, let's, let's, let's see what we got. Turnabout Countdown. Uh, I want to make sure I got the, uh, yeah, okay, um, uh, from episode start. Start from the beginning of this episode, well, duh. <laughs> we got anime cutscenes. Oh my god, I can actually see the, uh, actually, before, actually, no, we'll wait for the countdown, or the cutscene to, to end. What the? Someone blew up the cor a courtroom? These are dark times where the law has been reduced to rubble. And it's up to us to restore it to its former glory. Who's that? Yeah. I know what you mean. It looks like your target finally decided to make a move. Don't you worry. I've got a trusty new partner on board. Hello? Done! Ready to go? She has a lawyer's badge. You bet! Let's do it! She's been with us for half a year, though I can hardly believe it. Anyway, her power will be our greatest weapon. A new lawyer again, huh? Are you alright, miss? Definitely not. <laughs> yeah, it's for this very reason I returned. Time to bring it to an end. Phoenix Wright is back in action. You, you're you're wearing your blue suit a little differently, huh? Hey, who the hell is that? Uh, Apollo? What happened to you? Eh, please don't do that. That looked like it hurt, especially because you're wearing bandages. What in the world happened to you? Okay. We're off to a great start. We got anime cutscenes. And yeah. Episode 1. Turnabout Countdown. It's the final count. Actually, no, this is the beginning of the episode, so. That doesn't fit. Heh, <laughs> heh, whatever this is. The best thing about bombs is how they erase and destroy without discretion. to do is pin everything on that little girl. Framing someone, huh? Okay, I remember their face. I will not forget that. December 17, 9.22 a.m. District Court. Okay. Hmm. Nope, not feeling nervous at all. Anything what a girl can get used to. Even a tense atmosphere like this is no biggie. 
I'm assuming you're playing as a new lawyer. The girl, at least. You doing okay, Athena? Who's this? Oh, Apollo. <laughs> oh, Apollo. Yeah, doing great. Like, I'm in a little tune great. Oh, yeah, well, that's good to hear. Although, I could have sworn I heard your voice crack for a second there. Ugh, I'm that transparent, huh? Oh, boy. Cracking? No, my voice isn't cracking. Nerves of steel, here I tell you. Don't mind the line in the bottom, in the bottom of the screen. That's just because of the new iPhone. This is Apollo Justice. He's a fellow lawyer at the office I work for. So we do have a new lawyer, a third lawyer now. Apollo is the lead to the defense of this case. I'm going to be there at the bench with him, doing what I can to help out. I'll do whatever it takes to defend Junie. J Junie, huh? You steal. How are you holding up? I told you really didn't number on you. I'm just happy that you're okay, Athena. Although, I can't pretend I have no connection to this case. That's why I'm gonna steal that Juniper name is What's this? Oh, you can check back what they all said. Oh, that's that's interesting. Oh, this is the... Okay, yeah, this is the safe slot. I'm sure you feel much the same way. Got that right. I won't rest until Junie is completely clear of all suspicion. Apollo, Athena... Or... Athena? Athena? I don't know her name. I'm assuming it's pronounced Athena. I don't know. Thank you for doing this for me. I'm assuming this is Junie. Yep, it is. Hey, are you okay? Sorry about that. I always seem to get into coughing fits whenever I get nervous. This kind of thing never happened at home in Horse Belt. This is Juniper Woods. She's my dear, dear childhood friend. She's also our client for this case. The news keep repeating that Junie is the outlet bomber. That's ridiculous. There's no way Junie would do anything like that. Got me a little snack, Tina. Just a little something from my garden. An orange. Hey, thanks. So, um, is it an orange or a tangerine? It's an orange. My grandma says... So, that orange is the color of strength and endurance. Oh, I get it. Strength for the trial, right? Junie, you're always so good to me. Jeez, look at me. Standing here and clutching an orange to my chest with tears in my eyes. Well, don't you worry. They'll be so powerful in there, they won't know what hit him. Right, Apollo? Yeah, that's right. Come what may, this is one trial. We just can't lose. Apollo? What the heck happened to you? Apollo? Apollo? Uh... Blood is seeping through his bandages. One of his wounds re must have reopened. All this time he was trying to put on a brave face, but he was really overdoing it. Mr. Justice! God damn it, I think uh, that's gonna keep oh, wait, hopping up whenever I press the arrow. Charles is about to start, sir. Please proceed to the courtroom. What now? But Apollo has no state to defend. <sighs> Uh, uh, I I have to defend Juniper. What are we gonna do? The trial's about to start with or without us. There's only one other option I can think of at a time like this. But even if I called him now, he'd never get here in time. Gee, I wonder who that'd be, because I, I may have an idea who it is. No, wait, there's something else I can do. Apollo, give me all the evidence for the case. Huh? What are you gonna do? I can even see him sweating. You guys can see that, right? <laughs> hey, Liv. Yes, miss? The defense would like to submit a substitution of attorney petition. You know. You're not serious. 
country is getting better. I'll defend Judy. All by yourself? Dina, stop for a second and think about what you're saying. You've never once taken a case in a loan before, right? No, hey, problema. I can handle it. I think. I think it's not good enough. I guess it's really up to Juni. Would you be okay with me taking over? Um... Sure. I believe in you, Dina. That's enough for me. You're worried for me, aren't you? To be honest, I'm pretty nervous, too. I think my heart might just burst out of my chest. But you're in no shape to stand out the bench now. So you just have to leave it to me. Hold on, guys. Okay, that was... okay. Alright. I can see your mind made up anyway. I hate it that I can't be there, but I know you'll give your utmost to defend Juniper. You bet I will. Rest assured of that. My name is Athena Sykes, I think. I'm still just a newbie, but I'm a lawyer. This is only the second time I've taken the lead in a defense case. This first episode, this is your this is your, this is your second defense? Okay. It'll be the first time I stand up there alone, though. But I have to do this. I'm definitely not about to let anything bad happen to Junie. I'm assuming Mr. Payne is going to be the prosecutor. Knowing first episodes in every H20 series. 9.46 a.m. Yeah, that's before 10. We're already starting to... Ah, uh, whatever. Day one court on session. All rise. Wow, that's a new way of introdu introduction. Court is now in session for the trial of Juniper Woods. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Yeah, since I thought you look different, what the heck is with you? The prosecution is also ready, Your Honor. Aha. Uh -huh. And what is the meaning of this? I was under the impression that Mr. Red Monkey would be my opponent today. Yes, well, a substitution of attorney petition was submitted just a few moments ago. Due to the explosion in the courthouse yesterday, Mr. Justice is unable to continue. So Apollo was a, was, was a part of that bombing. But at the same time, he was a victim. Huh. I see, I see. No, I'm surprised he used that as an excuse to run away. Would mean an adversary who wouldn't want to feign illness in order to escape. What the hell is that guy? I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. Well, I would if I wasn't so nervous. Ah, this arrogant jerk. You arrogant jerk. No, widget. Am I hearing getting worse? I could have sworn I heard the defense say something just now. No, you didn't hear anything at all. Especially not from me. Hmm, how odd. I could have sworn I also heard something. Oh, that would be my indispensable partner, Widget. He sometimes blurts out what I'm thinking. <laughs> well then. If that's the case, then it's a clear contradiction to what you just stated. A contradiction? You say that you said nothing. However, that device of yours says what you're thinking. Then you indeed said I was. What was it? Elegance at work? Eh. Actually, he was arrogant jerk. <laughs> wow, way to get him, Athena. <laughs> At any rate, what does it matter if it's a red monkey or a yellow monkey facing me? The fresh out of law school rookie can defend the witness. Mr. Payne, I believe that's enough. Let's get back to the case. Of course, Your Honor. I'm more than ready to show with this little girl why they call me the rookie humiliator. I knew it. He really is an arrogant jerk. Arrogant jerk. Miss Sight, if you can't if you continue to insult the prosecution, I will remove you from this court. Ah, I'm very sorry. It's just a knee jerk reaction. Now then, Mr. Payne. For your opening statement, if you please. Thank you, Your Honor. Now then. The incident occurred yesterday here at this very courthouse in courtroom number four. 
At the time, the trial for a certain bombing was being held in a courtroom number four. Being held in courtroom number four. Oh yes, I was presiding over that trial as well. And Mr. Justice was there as the. Uh, oh no, that, that was Judge. Whoops. And Mr. Justice was there as the lawyer for the defense. A bomb that was being pre present presented as evidence suddenly went up during the trial. It was a terrible incident, and quarter number four was completely destroyed. Fortunately, we were able to start evacuation procedures before the explosion occurred. Just a few seconds more, and it would have turned into a horrific la loss of human life. But there was, in fact, one death, was there not? That is correct, Your Honor. One court number four was examined after the blast. The body of Detective Candace Arm was discovered. She was to take the stand as a witness later in the trial. I suppose she wasn't able to evacuate in time? What a terrible tragedy. I must admit, I stumbled at least ten times myself before I was able to escape. Maybe the court should see to getting you in even shorter robes? The victim's body was found near the entrance to the courtroom. I suspect she stayed until the very end to help guide the others out safely. Your Honor, allow me to submit as evidence the victim's autopsy report and details about the bomb. Okay. Okay, I know how this works. All evidence for the trial is found in the court record. When I want to check something, I just tap the court record panel in the upper right. Let's check it now. Uh huh. Cause of death: trauma to back of head caused by impact with a flat object. Time of death: between 8 to 11 a.m. Really? How is that gonna help? Time bomb that destroyed the courtroom. It was hidden inside a stuffed animal when it was detonated. Who do I have a profile? It's Apollo, age 23. Gaspin Pain? Why would the Winston Pain? You're 50 fu Frick you, dude. <laughs> oh well, I got my attorney badge. Well, that's something. Oh, it's gone. I'm gonna take a peek later. Now well then, please call the accused to the witness stand. To the Burr Woods. Defendant, are you feeling alright? You're looking a bit pale. So sorry, I was feeling a bit weak when I first arrived here at the courthouse. <laughs> Jeez. Hi, I'm alright. She didn't really give me her all. I better make sure I do the same. <laughs> if we could please proceed. Your name and occupation, defendant. Ripper Woods. I'm a high school student. Miss Woods, can you confirm you were in the courthouse on the day in question? Yes. I need to apologize through my friend Dina. And so. I was there yesterday to watch his trial and lend my support. Something wrong. Judy is really scared. <laughs> Did you know I'm also known as a defendant humiliator? It looks like I have yet another chance to show everyone how I earned that moniker. <sighs> Does this arrogance know no bounds? I have to protect Judy no matter what. Hey, you arrogant sh uh, Prosecutor Payne! Hmm, what is it? Do you want me to demonstrate why I'm known as a rookie humiliator instead? Hey, Pasadena, don't let him get to you. Prosecutor Payne, Judy is telling the truth. But Mr. Justice also backed up her claim when he saw when we saw him in the defendant lobby. And Juni, he said that he was glad to get the lotus root you gave him, too. He was? My grandma said lotus root is good for your eyes. She said they can even help you see into the future. <laughs> they can? That's a perfect present for a lawyer. Yeah, that's true, I guess he must not have eaten them. 
Hmm, a sweet meat girl like this blowing a courtroom to bits? I must say, it's very hard to believe. Objection! Objection! Now, now, Your Honor, don't let her seemingly innocent appearance fool you. The defendant had a motive for committing this crime. That's not true. I don't have any kind of motive. And I didn't even know the lady who was killed. I admit the investigation didn't turn up any connection between the victim and the defendant. However, that doesn't matter. The only thing that does is that her objective was the destruction of courtroom number four itself. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Why in the world would Miss Wood want to do that? Mm hmm, that's a very good question coming from a novice such as yourself. But first, a question for the defendant. Have you ever been brought up on a false charges? What? Why? Yes, yes I have. And did that experience cause you to harbor a grudge against the court system? Objection! Objection! Now wait just one minute, if that kind of thing was a motive for blowing things up, then every one of our clients would turn into bombers. That's a valid point. We wouldn't have a single courthouse left standing in the land. I can see that Hugh isn't the only one who might bear res resentment against the court, but Miss Wood is the only person who could have committed this crime. Why? Because we have found some decisive evidence that proves the defendant's guilt. Defendant's guilt. I don't know who said that. I cannot stutter. Decisive, huh? I'll believe it when I see it. You know the very unique aspect of the bomb itself, Your Honor. What exactly was so unique about it? Hmm. Why don't we have Miss Sykes answer that question? Huh? Me? Hmm. <laughs> I notice that you appear to be very nervous and well, and well gentleman that I am. I'd like to offer you the chance to gain some confidence with such an easy question. Could he be any more consistent that's me? Really, what a thoroughly unpleasant man. Hell is for loser. Huh. What did it just what did it just say? Nothing. Not a single thing. Now let's see. What was I supposed to do at a time like this? Oh, I know. The court record. Uh, let's go ahead and check it again, just so I can refresh my memory. Cause of death. Trauma in the back of head caused by... Uh, okay. Okay, I'll just go ahead and continue on. You need somewhere in the court record. Alright, Miss Sykes. Let's hear your answer. What was unique about the bomb that blew up the court? Was it because it was... ...in Apollo's briefcase in the judge's pocket inside a stuffed animal? It's not a stuffed animal! <laughs> Mr. Payne, what kind of simplet simpleton do you take me for? It was stuffed inside a stuffed animal. Its evil intentions covered up by a cute exterior. <laughs> very good. Have a cookie. The bomb that went off in the courtroom was indeed hidden inside a stuffed animal. Hey, how do you like that? Not bad, huh? I am fine, just like I said from the start. I can do this. Yes, I recall that the I was I recall the bomb was stuffed inside a stuffed animal the whole time. I never even got to take a look at it. But what connection does this impl impish elephant have with the defendant? The answer to that question lies in another piece of evidence, which I have here. The tail? And what pray tell is this? It appears to be a little singing. It's a tail, Your Honor. A tail of a poor victim of the, ex of the explosion. This is incredible. Are you saying it's Detective Arms tail? Your Honor is very close, but no. It belongs to this stuffed animal. It's called the Phony Fanty. A rather unpleasant name, if you ask me. Tell me about it. He is a mascot for a campaign to eliminate false evidence and false charges, is he not? Exactly. His mother's phony evidence is just trunked up. That's so wrong in so many levels. The phony fancy tail is made of a vinyl claw. And we found something very interesting on its surface. The defendant's fingerprints. What? The 
funny thing he reminded the prosecution with all the evidence we've needed. They clearly proved that the accused handled the bomb. I... Uh... Me? How? Why? That doesn't make sense. Why would Judy's fingerprints be on it? That does appear to be a pretty suitable evidence. Report accepted into evidence. Oh, great. Miss Woods, do you have an explanation for this? I... I don't understand. I... How about you, Miss Sight? Do you have any plausible explanation to refute this aside a piece of evidence? Well, I... uh... Do it. I can't think of a single thing. I better come up with something for Judy's sake. If you can't produce an answer, we can always go straight to the ruling, if you prefer. No, I have to say something fast. What the? Oh no, I can't get my voice to work. Why now of all times? What the? I thought I overcame this already. Uh, maybe I'm still not ready to stand in court? What? What did I s What? Athena was a witness? As a child? As you can see, there is no room for debate. OBJECTION! Is that how I think it is? Why, it's you! Yup, I knew it. There we go, Phoenix. Sorry it took me so long to get here, Athena. Apollo explained the whole thing to me over the phone. He asked me to come help you out in this place. Thanks for coming. I hate to admit it, but I was having a real rough time on my own. Oh, I don't know. I think you were doing just fine, all things considered. And you hung in there, giving me enough time to get here. Now let's turn things around. Okay, I'm actually gonna make a rule, guys. I'm gonna not talk a lot when there's anime cuts to you, just because I don't want to miss it out. Or, like, miss out every single detail about it. You got it, boss. Ho ho ho, look who showed up out of the blue. If it isn't Mr. Phoenix right, you always manage to surprise me. Your Honor, Mr. Phoenix called for an early ruling. Well, I believe there are still many things that need to be deliberated. How did Miss Wood's fingerprints wind up on the stuffed animal tail? How would the bomb even detonate it? Until these questions are answered, I assert it's impossible for a fair ruling to be made. Hmm. You are absolutely right. Let us continue where we left off. I assume you have no objections, Mr. Payne? Uh... <laughs> nothing at all, Your Honor. This woman really looks like she's having a hard time. She looks really struggling, Mr. Wright. I got the sense she's afraid of the courtroom itself. Because of yesterday? Yeah, it was understandably very traumatic for her. Poor thing. And here she is back at the courthouse again, being so brave. I'd like to make a request, Your Honor. If it's all possible, I'd like to have Miss Woods have the rest in the lobby. Given the defendant's condition, very well, I grant special permission. You go get some rest, Junie, and leave the rest to us. Okay, thank you. Sorry about this. What are you, ill or s- <laughs> Are you ill? What is- Phoenix Wright. I've been looking forward to meeting you. It's been a while, Mr. Payne. 
<laughs> You're more clueless than I'd heard. I do believe you mean. How do you do? For I am Gaspin Payne. I'm the younger brother of your longest, long-standing rival, Winston Payne. What? Long-standing rival? When were we ever rivals, let alone long-standing? You'll see, Mr. Wright. I'm according to Winston of disgrace who he met with the, without your hands. <sighs> Looks like the royal, this royal pain is going to be as thoroughly unpleasant as the other. <laughs> your Honor. The prosecutor would like to call the decisive witness to the stand. This witness will testify as to how the accused detonated the bomb in the courtroom. Very well. Please call your witness, Mr. Payne. Oh my god, it's this dude. Witness, your name and occupation, please. Witness? Name, Ted Tunney. Occupation, bomb disposal specialist. Oh my, what a strange robotic voice you have. Be synthesized via typing. It is the same thing as me talking. <laughs> he sounds exactly like a robot. Can't you speak in a normal manner? I can. He can? But I do not like to speak. Speaking is inefficient. Ener energy expenditure. Speaking. Typing understanding. Hmm. What an odd witness. Aren't all witnesses sometimes odd? Mr. Tony was in charge of the bomb for the trial and was there when it went off. Being a bomb squad specialist, do you have any relation to the defendant? Negative. I first met the girl while on the job. Many people are employed by the police. I know only a fraction of them. However, I was shocked when I first discovered the body of the victim. Shocked? I was the first one on the scene after the explosion. I went there to save her. God! It's her safety, but I ended up discovering a dead body. Hmm, so he was the first to discover the body, was he? He's here to testify about the circumstances surrounding the moment of the explosion. Very well. The court will hear Mr. Tony's testimony. At the very least, show this court some respect and remove that face guard, witness. <laughs> yup, it's him. Alright, first witness testimony of this game. When the bomb went off. The bomb was really disarmed by me, then transported here as evidence. Bomb name HH-3000, operated by timer with a remote. I was watching from the gallery when I suddenly became alarmed. I saw that the bomb timer was counting down. What, what are you doing? So even though the bomb was supposed to be disarmed, it somehow got switched on? Precisely. Activating the timer is very simple. One, connect wires. Two, switch on timer. A monkey could do it. I'm sure even you would be able to, Mr. Wright. Uh, I guess this makes you the blue monkey in this barrel of fun, boss. <clears throat> I'd like to now begin my cross-examination. Huh? What? Is that a bomb? Mr. Tony, what is that? HA3000, aka a bomb. A bomb? Great, googly boogly. Yeah. Mr. Tony, I demand that you disarm a decision. Oh my god, that was a fake bomb. Disassembly complete. Hmm. 5.3 seconds, 0 0.2 seconds short of my personal best. Are you trying to give me a heart attack? I know exactly spring chicken, you know. This is an exact replica of the HH-2000. It is used for practice disarming bombs. Disarm equals success. Explosion equals failure. I tried to pick up the bomb that exploded, is it? Is that what it looks like? I submitted a photograph of the real bomb taken just before the trial. Huh. Dimensions 10HX. I'm not gonna say all that stuff. Weight 12 ounce. A perfect replication. The bomb does appear to be a very good copy indeed. Yes, however, I cannot replicate the detonation mechanism. It has a very puzzling wiring setup. It is regrettable I could not re re replicate it. With this, that's enough. There's no need to replicate anything here. Oh, great. 
And now the defense will begin their cross-examination. Hmm? What now? Where has Miss Sykes gone to? <sighs> I got it, Athena. Athena, you can come out now. Okay, Mr. Wright, let's get to work. I guess you were pretty scared, huh? What? I don't know what you're talking about. She was about to bolt. Hey, put a sock in it, Widget. <sighs> as transparent as ever. Now let's see. Where were we? You were after cross-examination? Oh, cross-examination. Of course. She seems disoriented. I wonder if she's alright. Maybe she's asking if she remembers how to cross-examine to help her focus. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just a tutorial, so I'm just, uh, uh, she'll be fine. Nah, no need for that right now. She'll be fine. I'll do everything I can to help. If you can't find any contradiction, and you flub up too often, don't be afraid to ask me for help. Tap the consult panel when it appears to consult with me. I'll let you know where I think the super suspicious uh, the, the, the super the suspicious statement is. Sounds good. I'll be counting on you if I get in the bind. All right, it's cross examination time. Here we go. First cross examination. When the bomb went off. The bomb was originally designed by me. Uh, yeah. Bombing. Ages were abraded by time. <laughs> I was watching from the gallery when it suddenly became alarmed. I'm actually gonna hear him say, "Hold it." Let's see what he says. Hold it. Hold it. Huh. Okay, that's quite a different voice. Why were you in the gallery? My duty may have been over for the moment, but I wanted to keep watching. Even though the bomb was disarmed, you can never be too careful. Explosive devices are very dangerous things. Oh, how am I really responsible for you? A model to be emu emulated. I practice arming bombs every day. I practice assembling them too. I'm hard to get, but assembling them? Well, I have you know that I practice presenting evidence every day myself. I see, but do you ever practice having evidence presented to you? Presented to me? What? No, I... Then you cannot very well call yourself a professional yet, can you? Alright, that does it. I'm gonna start practicing having evidence presented to me every day. Now you better drink some coffee, bot. We're gonna be pulling on all nighter. Uh, I don't think that will be necessary. Or worth either of our time. So, Mr. Tony, what did you witness from the gallery? I saw that the bomb timer was counting down. How can you see- how can you- How can you see the bomb counter when it's inside a stuffed animal? OBJECTION! Objection! So you say you saw the bomb's countdown, is that right? Of course, I clearly saw it counting down to zero. And I say that you are clearly lying. What are you talking about? There's no way you could have seen the bomb's timer. After all, the bomb was concealed inside a stuffed animal. <laughs> Mr. Tony. How can you claim to, n to know the bomb was going about to go off? When you couldn't even see the timer. Ah. What? No! It does seem like a glaring inconsistency indeed. Witness, how do you explain this? Well, I... I... Oh, that was great, Mr. Wright. I found a contradiction right off the bat. Always remember, Athena. When you find an inconsistency in a witness testimony, there's always a reason behind it. It could be a lie, a hidden meaning, a secret. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's up to us to dig it out. Pointing out every contradiction we find is the best way to do it, right, Paul? Now the question is, what can we dig out of Mr. Tony? Well, let me see. I, uh... Are you really typing all that? <laughs> no, no, no. There must be some mistake. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. I remember now. The sound. I do because of the sound. So, what sound? When a timer of this type of bomb is switched on, it beeps softly. It beeps softly. Beep, 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 I'm machine. It is the sound of the bomb counting down. Sorry, I got to say it. A beeping noise, you say? 
I suppose it would be possible to notice that even f uh, there. Simply made a mistake. My bad. Objection! Objection! How in the world did you hear such a tiny little sound all the way from the gallery? Listening for the sound of bombs timer is an integral part of my work. I constantly undergo training so that I will never miss it. I hardly think training would help you hear something so soft from so far away. What now? That's literally what I just said. Are you making light of the fine signs of disarming bombs? It is a solemn mission that I put my life on the line to perform. What kind of specialist would I be if I could not hear bomb timer? It's not like I'm like a toaster, you know. Now he's just showing off. You keep asserting that the sound was too tiny to hear, but the only thing to do tiny to hear is your skill as a lawyer. Being suspicious is not an attractive quality, you know. And you're just overflowing with attractive qualities, are you? Or perhaps you have some proof that Mr. Tony did not hear the sound? Well, no, but... It still seems totally suspect. You are sus right now. But it's going to be really hard to prove that he didn't hear something. If I, if I have this correct, the prosecutor's argument is that someone reactivated the bomb before it was brought into the courtroom. <sighs> what I don't understand, Mr. Page, is why you believe that person to be Miss Woods. That's simple, Your Honor. Mr. Tony happened to be there when it happened. He was there when the defendant rearmed the bomb. Doesn't that technically mean his possible suspect himself, too? What's this now? It happened before the trial started. It was when Detective Harmon and I were transporting the bomb. Why did you bring a bomb? We brought the bomb to the lobby for the defense. Bomb equals evidence. The lawyer wanted to see before the start of the trial. Apollo, why did you ask for that? Looking for a chance to get the bomb, Miss Wood was already there in that lobby. Her goal was surely to rearm the bomb and seal the remote switch. The remote switch? Yes, the switch that controlled the bomb remotely. Duh. They have been missing ever since the incident. A remote switch, huh? A switch that starts the time bomb countdown. Stolen just before the blast and is now missing. I'm partially to blame. I left the bomb in remote on top of the transport case. And they were rearmed and stolen when I was walking with a lawyer. Talking with a lawyer. The defendant then used the remote from the inside the, inside the courtroom to start the time. OBJECTION! OBJECTION! How can you assert so unequivocally that the bomb was re rearmed in the lobby? OBJECTION! OBJECTION! The bomb was safely secure in the transport case. The only time it was outside this case was in that lobby. Therefore, that was the one and only opportunity anyone had to meddle with it. Someone other than Mr. Tone could have opened the case and taken the bomb out. Impossible. The transport case is assigned exclusively to me. Do you see this number here? This is my identification number. L10015R. And I have the only key that can open the case. Bomb transport, huh? Nevertheless, Mr. Payne's assertion is nothing but more than conjecture. You have no proof that it was Mr. Woods who stole the remote switch. And by the same token, you have no proof that it wasn't her. But what I do have is a piece of evidence that proved the defendant handled the bomb. Uh, ah, her tail! 5 minutes, 24 seconds, 2.3 distant seconds. The defense advantage lasted a mere 5 minutes. <clears throat> Talk about rotten hand. As long as they have her fingerprints as their trump card, I'm at a big disadvantage. Hmm. It appears we'll have to hear from the defendant herself once more. I wholeheartedly agree. I wholeheartedly agree, Your Honor. I would like to recall Miss Woods to the stand. I trust you have no objections, Mr. Wright? I'm worried about her condition, but we do need her testimony. On the other hand, I'm not sure I want to make Athena mad. I can meet your feelings, you know, boss. Guess there's no hiding from her, huh? 
Don't worry, I know we, ha we need her testimony. But if anybody picks on her again, they'll pay. Okay, she's already at anger level 1. Don't worry, I'll stop the proceeding before I let anything bad happen to her. The defense has no objections, Your Honor. In that case, I'll take my leave. But before I do, there's just one more thing, Mr. Wright, is it? Me? Yes? Dismantling mobs is my job. Dismantling the case is yours. Do you think you can handle it? I look forward to seeing you try. <clears throat> the sky's hiding something. I just know it. Now if you'll excuse me. Oh boy. Baylor, please go out to the lobby and bring it up the defendant. Okay, well, Miss Wood still doesn't look happy. Junie! Hi, Athena. She looks even worse off than before. Don't worry, Junie. We'll here f we're here for you. Thanks, Dina. And I'll do my best, too. You blew up the courtroom because you bear resentment against the court, correct? No, of course not. I... What's that you say? I can barely hear you. I... I haven't done anything wrong. This prosecutor's scary. OBJECTION! OBJECTION! What a cute little girl. Stop acting innocent and tell the truth. This is getting ugly. You rearmed the bomb because you wanted to blow up the courthouse. Admit it. That's why you went to the lobby where Mr. Justice was. Isn't that right? Are you gonna keep- how long are you gonna keep badgering the defendant? Uh... Mr. the right. Can I go get that prosecutor a smack? What? Of course not. Do we have to review courtroom manners 101 again? You can't let a creep that bully hit a girl like this on so easily. I haven't forgotten about how he treated you. Don't worry about me, just help Junie. Her heart's crying out. She's so scared, so very scared. Looks like Athena's picking something up with her kind sense of hearing. It sounds like this time it's the voice of Miss Wood's heart. Don't deny it. You stole the remote switch and used it in the courtroom, didn't you? Objection! Objection! Your Honor, please put a stop to that. Mr. Payne is battering the defendant. Yes, Miss Wood does seem quite frightened. Mr. Payne, I ask that you behave more like a gentleman. Ah, but don't you know, Your Honor? There is no more gentleman in the world than I. Ah, as if a gentleman or even a gentle man would behave like he does. Don't let that rude ruffian win. You know, huh? How dare you call a gentleman such as a rude ruffian? I'll have you know I attend matters class every Saturday. I'm uh, more than just a mere gentleman. I'm a genteel man. Tell me you're tearing a young lady or not. I'd demand my money back from that matters class if I were you. Yeah. Should probably be the adult here and stop the two of them, but. But I'll let the judge do it. <laughs> Mr. Payne, that will be enough. Certainly, Your Honor. No further questions. Let's move on to the defendant's testimony. Miss Woods, please share with the court what you were doing when the bomb went off. Oh boy. Well, the bomb went off. Well, that date, I was watching from the gallery. The bomb went off. And rubble started falling. It fell on top of me. Kitty clearly in pain, being forced to recall the bombing like this. She can't even get her words out. This isn't going to work, so what now? Hey, wait a minute. Even if she can't vocalize what she wants to say, we can listen to what's inside her heart. Yes, now's the proper time to use Athena's power. Hmm, I wonder what it is. You can hear it, can't you, Athena? The cries of Miss Wood's heart, who was Hood's heart? Yes, and they sound incredibly strained. Listening to a heart, huh? She's so scared, I think she should collapse. She could collapse any second. She should collapse. That sounds harsh. 
so I'm not bad. <laughs> Athena has a unique ability. Oh yeah, I just realized, guys, look at the left side, look at the left side of the screen. It even says episode one turned about countdown to trial day one. Interesting. With her finely tuned sense of hearing, she can hear the words of a witness heart. In essence, she can sense how a person is really feeling from the tone of their voice. Guess up to Tina and her special ability now. Tina, I want you to use an analytical psychology you studied. And listen to the testimony of Miss Wood's hearts. Okay, boss. I'll give it a go. After all, this is the whole reason I put all that effort into studying analytical psychology. Of course. Let's do this. Wow. So your holographic thingamabob can show us how Miss Wood's feeling, right? In a nutshell, yes. The emotions and images that I picked up on just now while listening to her testimony. I can enter all of that into Widget and use the Mood Matrix to analyze them. Whoa. That's cool. These mood markers have ref reflect fluctuation in Judy's emotion. If he feels happy or is enjoying the memory, the happy marker will light up. If she feels angry or frustrated, the angry marker will react. If she feels sadness or is frightened by memory, the sad marker will, be bl will blink. When she feels surprised or confused, the surprise marker will let us know. So with her special ability in Widget's Moon Matrix program, we can track how Miss Woods is feeling as she testifies. Talk about the wonders of technology. Yep, now let's give it a shot. I'm picking up some kind of discord or noise in Junie's heart. See here? This is what the noise looks like in the Moon Matrix. Mood Matrix, okay. It's a result of inconsistency between her testimonies and her feelings. If we can pinpoint these inconsistencies, the noise level should drop. So we're trying to drop the noise level, huh? Okay, it's time to listen to Ms. Tr what's true testimony. This is looking cool so far. Well, that day... I was watching from the gal- Oh yeah, this is, this is basically rep repeating. It's like in a cross-examination, but like, so I'm just gonna go normal voice on these. The bomb went off cough. Oh wait, no, that's just a... So you were surprised. And the rubble started falling. It fell on top of me. Oh, well, I think I have a good grasp on Judy's emotional state now. This power of Athena is incredible. And I'm seeing an unexpected emotion that's inconsistent with the content of her testimony. What? Already? It fell on top of me. Look at this, when she said it fell on top of me, the happy marker is reacting. Rebel started falling on top of you? Why are you happy about that? That is that is weird. Well look at that. That is odd. There must be a reason for this contradictory emotion. We just need to do some digging. When you find an unexpected emotion, Tap the unexpected emotion from the four four mood markers. What's the unexpected emotion? Uh, this one, the happy marker. Got it. Got it. Which is registering joy from Miss Woods recalled when when Miss Woods recalled the rubble falling on her. There must be a reason for this unexpected emotion, Miss Woods. As the rubble was falling, was there also something that made you feel happy? What? Mr. Wright, the feeling of happiness spreading throughout Junie's heart. Keep going on this point and I bet Junie will start to calm down. Great, let's hear what she has to say. Um, just as I was about to escape the courtroom, the bomb went off. I was so startled, I tripped, and then the rubble started falling on top of me. I really thought I was done for. But just then... Apollo came and rescued me. Apollo? He used his own body to shield me from the rubble. So that's when he sustained those injuries. 
How do you feel, Judy? Did talking about Apollo give you some courage? Yes, Apollo is just like the sun, strong and bright and warm. You were blushing when you talked about him. Hmm. Just talking about him makes me feel like a leaf undergoing its photosynthesis. Hmm. Interesting. And see, your coughing stopped all of a sudden. Oh, you're right. Thank you, Athena. So we're trying to drop the noise level. Okay, that's interesting. Looks like we were able to draw out some new testimony. Hehe, <laughs> pretty neat, huh? But there's still some noise left, meaning there must still be some discord in Junie's heart. Hmm, I guess we'll have to keep going then. Let me input this new information to update the moon matrix and we'll be, we'll be good to go. You remember what to do, right? When I find an unexpected emotion, I should touch pinpoint. That's right, and then you tap the unexpected emotion from the, mo from the moon markers. If we can find a reason for the discord in our heart, then we should be able to draw even more in your testimony. Okay, that's interesting. Try to run, but I was too slow. Before I could get away, the bomb went off. I tripped and rubble started falling on me. Thought I was done for. But then Apollo came and rescued me. Why were you sad? <laughs> Why did the sad marker show up? You were happy when Mr. Justice rescued you, weren't you? Yes, I was really happy. But was, was there also something you felt sad about at the same time? Sad? The reason I ask is... When you were describing how you were rescued, we sent a little sadness too. Oh, I think it's probably because of Bum Rap Whiny. Ri whiny? Riny. Bum Rap Riny? Well, what do you know? Something new. That's right. I... I bought... I brought my stuffed animal Bum Rap Riny to watch the trial with me. Bum Rap Riny and Phony Fanty are brothers. Who knows that the legal world can inspire a whole new line of merchandise? Or a whole line of merchandise. I have bum, bum rap, bum rap, what? It's a little tongue twister, like a speech jammer. It's a little hard to say that, right? With me while I was watching the trial. But it wasn't until Paul saved me that I realized I'd lost him as I was running away. My poor Riney, a victim of that terrible bomb. Oh, I know. You can see what he looks like in the poster, in this poster. No more bum raps. Wow. I swear the campaign to eradicate fake evidence and false charges. Phony Fanty and bum rap wine. Wine. I almost said it again. Ah! Freaking tongue twister. Nothing against the campaign, but why an elephant and a rhinosaurus? Mr. Wright, I don't sense any Discord in Judy's heart anymore. I assume that's a good thing. So I guess that means we managed to draw out all of our testimony. So it is a good thing. Get noise drop level drop and yeah. Find unexpected emo find find some inconsistency emotions. I actually like the new mechanic. This is this is one interesting new mechanic. That's right. I'll just make an update with the new info and we'll have the whole picture. So do you think your new testimony will help? Absolutely. I don't know what I would have done without you, Athena. So bum rap wine Oh my god. Was in the court. I'll just call him Bum Rap, that's it. <laughs> that courtroom when the bomb went off. Now that we know that, it changes the meaning of that other piece of evidence. All I have to do is present it at the right statement. Why are we doing it in the Moon Matrix? I was watching the gallery of Bum Rap Riney. I tried to run, but I was too slow. Before I could get out of the courtroom, the bomb went off. Okay, so now we're now we're going for like real cross examination and pointing out or pointing out contradictions. Okay, I'm so stunned. I tripped him. Okay, I thought I was done for. That Paulo came and rescued me. Uh, let me see what I have. Actually, hold on. No, 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 no. I was watching from the gallery of Bummer when I tried to run, but I was slow. Hold on. That tail. 
So it can't. So this is. Po it's possible that this this phony fanty tail is not the phony fanty, but the bum ref Riney. Let me try it. Objection! Objection! Miss Woods, I know this trial has been very hard for you, but you can relax now. You are, without a doubt, innocent. Mr. Wright, what wild assertion are you making now? My wild assertion is simply this. The two stuffed animals were mixed up. The tail of the defendant's fingerprints were found on wasn't that of phony fanty. It was a tail of her gallery companion, Bum Ref Riney. Objection! Objection! What? What nonsense is that? I can see they're both stuffed animals, yes, but they're completely different characters. An elephant and a rhino. They're as distinct as a defense lawyer and a prosecutor. But are they really so different? Both defense lawyers and prosecutors strive to protect the peace through law. Even elephant and rhino have some similar characteristics. They're both gray, for example. Anyway, this poster is all I need to prove my assertion to be true. If I may direct the court's attention here, you clearly see how the two got mixed up. Oh, I gotta point it out. Um, the tail, right? Right here. Take that! Take that! Well, would you look at that? The two tails are exactly the same. Yes, exactly. The two stuffed animals are based on entirely different di animals. But the design of their tails is exactly the same. Ah! Hair, dude. Order, order in the court. As long as the possibility exists that the tail belongs to the bum rep Riney, we can no longer consider it to be decisive proof that the defendant did handle defend, defendant handled the bomb. As things stand, I consider the target against the accused unsubstantiated. Oh god. What did you agree, Mr. Payne? Um yes, of course, Your Honor. Oh, that was great, Mr. Wright. You turned things right around. Yeah, it's not over yet, but at least we haven't managed to hold out this long. I believe that brings our proceedings for today to a close. Mr. Payne, I'm afraid you have some serious investigating ahead of you. Yes, Your Honor. Very well. Let us reconvene tomorrow. Court is adjourned. Alright, cool. I actually like the new mechanic of Athena's power. I actually like that one. Looking forward to do more, doing more of that. That was so exciting, boss. We did it. True to form, he managed to just barely pull it off at the very last moment. True to form? She never knew you had such a glowing opinion of me. Thank you for everything you were doing. You did great, Miss Woods. You really stuck it out there. Or stuck it out. You got really brave at the end, just when we needed you most, Shuni. Really. Thanks to you, we were able to turn things around. Well, you were the one who gave me that courage, Dina. Really? <laughs> Thanks. So be honest, was I of any help? Was I any help at all? Of course you were. Of course. Without you, we would have never gotten out that tight spot. That's good to hear. I may still have a lot to learn, but you can bet I'm going to give it my all. I'll be so good that one day you'll call me your partner. That's what I'd like to hear. Animal psychology. The ability to solve the, solve ri the riddles of the person's heart. Zena's true potential is beginning to really shine through. Now. Hey, where's Apollo anyway? Hmm, good question. I almost forgot about him. I assume he'd still be here in the lobby. Oh, I know. Maybe he's still in courtroom number four. Courtroom number four? What would he be doing at the scene of the explosion? When I came out to the lobby to rest, I told Apollo about bum rap whiny. Ah, god, I almost. Bleh. I told him I dropped Riney in the courtroom as I was trying to escape before the blast. And then. Paula said he had an idea where Riney might be, so he went want to take a look together. Huh, I guess Apollo can be pretty nice when he wants to be. So you went looking for a Riney together before you were called back into courtroom number 5? Yes. I've had some time to rest, so I was able to go and look for him. But 
then they called me into courtroom number five to testify. Probably was just not like Sam saying there, though. With all those injuries? I wonder how he's managing. I think Apollo might have figured something out. Hmm. Wonder what it was. He told me, I'm going to look for evidence to clear your name, Juniper. Just maybe he found some new piece of evidence. Anyway, we better go and get him. Good idea. Oh boy, here we go. December 17, 12, 11 p.m. District Court. Courtroom number four. Where are you, Apollo? Trial's over for today! Come on, I know you're... <gasps> no! What? Someone kill him? What the hell happened? Oh, to be continued. Well, gosh darn it. Oh well. Okay. Okay. Um. Oh, crap. No, we got, I gotta end the recording here now. Nope. See ya. We'll worry about Apollo another time. Um, <laughs> I'll worry about you guys another time. I should have clicked return to title. Okay, there we go. Yes, um, yes, don't worry, I saved my progress. Okay. I have, like, I I don't know what to say. I have, like, a lot of words to say here. Like, no words can, des like, no words can describe how I kind of like the new um, analytical psychology mood matrix and unexpected emotion inconsistency mechanic they added here. I actually really like that, and I'm looking forward to doing more of that. Uh, oh god. So, yeah, um, I don't know idea what happened to Apollo, but I guess we'll find out in the next part. Until then, thank you all for watching. Again, again, guys, I'm again sorry about Apollo Justice, but don't worry. Well, sorry about, like, the game, not him, but... I mean, of course I'm sorry for him that he got... that he's dead, or... No, he probably just got knocked out, but we'll know. Well, uh, yeah, we'll see. Anyways, again, thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for part two, um, episode one, Turnabout Countdown, and yeah, peace out.